the transfer function h is defined as output over input and in this case the output is v2 the voltage delivered by the up amp and the input voltage is, is vn or v1 uh, and if you want to find the transfer function we can do that really efficiently if we write up node equations for every node in the circuit so let's call the voltage at this node a, v a this one v b and this node v c all right let's start with v a so we have v a minus v1 and we want to use ohm's law on this capacitor but in order to do that we have to replace it by its impedance so let's erase it from the circuit and replace it by its impedance and the impedance has a simple uh, rectangle rectangle as a symbol and it has the size 1 over SC1 we call this uh, capacitance C1 because it's the first capacitor in the circuit and now we can use uh, Ohm's law so VA minus V1 times SC1 <coughs> And uh, current also runs from V8 down through the resistor, so VA over R1. We call this resistor R1. And this equals zero. And this is the first equation. And by the way, no current flows into the any of the inputs of the operation amplifier because we assume that it's an ideal op amp and an ideal op amp has infinite input impedance. Okay. Let's write the node equation up for VB. And we have to use the same trick here on this capacitor. We replace it by its uh, impedance. And there's not room to write it, so I'll just write it in the equation. VB minus uh, VC times SC2, because it's the second capacitor. Uh, and current also flows into the up amp. So VB minus VO. Oh, it's called the V2 over R2. Let's call this resistor R2. And uh, no current flows into the up amp input. And so this equals zero. And the last uh, node equation for, is for VC. And we have current flowing through the last resistor, R3, and we also have current flowing through the capacitor, uh, Vc minus Vb. Oh. Vc minus Vb times Sc2, and this equals zero as well. So now we have three equations. Let's write these equations up in Mabel and solve the system in there. So, see you in a bit. Okay, now I have written the equations up in Mabel and I've written it as a system of three equations. Now, we're not ready to solve the equation yet, or the system of equations yet, because we have to utilize one of the OPM's, op-amps abilities, and that is uh, the virtual short. So, so virtual short. And uh, this virtual short means that the voltage at the non-inverting input is the same as the voltage at the inverting input. So we have that VA is equal to VB. And this is true because there's negative feedback. If there were positive feedback, this would not hold. So we now have one less variable to work with. So we go back in Mabel and now we can solve the equation. Uh, we update the system of equations like this and then we solve for the unknown S and uh, there are three unknowns there are there is vp vc and v2 so let's solve uh, and we get an error and that's because i have called it vo in the equation it has to be v2 uh, maybe like this Uh, yes, yes, we get the right thing. Uh, we get three expressions, or we get three results, but the only one we care about is this one. 
And we remember that the transfer function h is defined as v2 over v1. And if we look at this equation, we actually see that if we divide with v1 on both sides of the equation, we end up with the transfer function, we end up with v2 divided by v1 equals some expression. So let's do that. We have v2 divided by v1, and this equals this entire expression but with v1 divided out. <clears throat> and it turns out that this is actually the transfer function for the circuit. Put it as a result in here. So let's, let's write um, hfs equals the transfer function. Uh, it's not the transfer function, it's not in standard form. Uh, for it to be in standard form, the term before the highest order of s has to be one, uh, and this is not the case. But it could, it can easily be made into standard form if we just divide every term in the entire transfer function, both numerator and denominator, with this term. C one, C two, R one, and R three. But I'm not going to do that because it's just a matter of uh, how it looks. You will get the same result if you plug in the same values. Anyway, uh, so this is the transfer function for the circuit. But we're also asked to locate the transfer function poles and zeros. And to do that, we have to use the component values. So I will just uh, plug in the values, component values in Mabel and meet you back in there. Okay, so now I have um, I plugged in the values. And now let's uh, uh, update the transfer function and we get this. <coughs> uh, in order to find the poles, we just have to solve the equation when the denominator is zero. And we can do that very easily. And we have, of course, have to solve the equation with respect to s. So solve the denominator is zero, comma s. And we find that these frequencies, these are the frequencies uh, where the poles are located. So minus 10,000, yeah, minus 10,000 and some other frequency. And the, the zeros are located at, are found by uh, setting the numerator to zero and solving for s. So set to zero and solve for s. <clears throat> and a zero is located at zero and some other negative frequency. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that those, I think these frequency might be in radians per second, but if you want them in Hertz, you can always just divide with two pi and then you get the frequency in Hertz. Um, but yeah, 